Breaking tonight, the House Oversight Committee releasing more bombshell Obamacare documents, revealing that as the president was encouraging people to go over the phone or to use old-fashioned paper forms to search the exchanges and buy one of his new plans, the administration knew that those phone lines and the applications would move no more quickly than the broken website because they had to go through the website anyway. In fact, we're seeing meeting notes that say, quote, the paper applications allow people to feel like they're moving forward in this process and provides another option. But at the end of the day, we are all stuck in the same queue. Watch what happened when the White House was pressed on that issue today. John, I get it. But the person who calls isn't the one who continues to wait after the paper application is filled. Uh, you, you, right? your, your mocking is entertaining, but the president said that we, you could apply within 25 minutes. That's that right. was not true. The work that you do, I think everybody else is looking quizzically because there's a reason to be quizzical here. You call up. You, you give your information, you get the questions answered that you need answered, and then it's, they take over from there. And then you find out you know, what you're eligible for, uh, and the process right. goes forward. Joining me now, Republican South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. He's a member of the committee uncovering all of these documents, and they have subpoenaed Secretary Kathleen Sebelius for more. Congressman, good to see you tonight. And so as the president was yes, out there repeatedly with the 1-800 number, he knew, he knew that that basically was just another way of sending people to the website ultimately. It's a facade. It, it, it's one of several facades, Megan. And, and, you know, the president already has a Nobel Prize for peace. I think he's shooting for one in fiction to send people to the mail instead of the website. When you know that you're going in exactly the same queue is a facade. It's a Potemkin village that is calculated to mislead folks and create this appearance that everything is going swimmingly when you know otherwise. Why can't there just be honesty? Why, why can't, I mean, we just picked this up with Mark Thiessen. Why can't he just come out and say, I, I didn't tell you the truth or I broke a promise? However he wants to phrase it, I broke a critical promise and millions of Americans are hurting now tonight because of it. And this is what I'm going to do about it. We don't have that. We have, I, what I said, this is what he, he said, what we've said was if you had a policy that didn't change. That's not what he said. And now the thing about, oh, well, you can just call the 1-800 number. Well, that, that just directs people back to the website. I could have sworn he said period at the end of that statement, and now he's added a rather lengthy footnote. The answer to your question, Meg, is I've never understood why politicians don't look at their fellow citizens and say, I made a mistake, I need you to forgive me, and it won't happen again. Uh, you know, Congress does not enjoy a very good approval rating, but nobody in government does. And part of the reason for that is instead of saying we made a mistake, even we made an intentional misstatement, we need you to forgive us. The response is uh, to evade and, and, and to answer questions falsely. And then the worst of all is is to is to assume that the American people are stupid enough to believe the explanation that he came up with today. I always say I can never understand these politicians who forget about the magic of videotape where we have it all on camera. I mean, we know what was said. Uh, Congressman, we will watch to see what, if anything, you guys get back from Secretary Sebelius, as I know you have a subpoena waiting and you continue to get more documents by the day. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.